Appalachia Rising, the podcast where we find stories of people who are in Appalachia doing great work. Today we have one of those people with us. She has been working in Appalachia for most of her life, but I want Kathy to be able to tell you a little bit about who she is and where she's from. So Kathy Walker, welcome to the podcast. Thank it's great you. to have you here. Thank you, Dr. Webb. How many years have you lived in Appalachia? Uh, a little over 30. A little 32 over? to be exact, That's yes. That's awesome. Yes. So tell us a little bit about your background, where you were born and raised, and then what brought you here? Okay, I was born in Tucson, Arizona. Really? I didn't know that. Yes, How about yes. That? I'm the daughter of a career IBMer. Okay. So I uh, moved here actually from the Washington, D.C. area. Yeah. Um, what year was that about? 87. 87, okay. Yes, good. Yes. So it was my first small town experience. How about that? Um, so a lot of adjusting to do. It truthfully was culture shock. Uh huh. But I grew to love it yeah. um, and cherish the tranquility and the peacefulness of the mountains. They so. kind of get into your blood, don't it they? It does. It does indeed. So did you come right here to, to Paintsville area or were I you did. somewhere else? Okay. I did. My husband uh, was from the area. Right. Uh, he's an attorney here okay. in a practice. Um, I get asked that question a lot. Why, why did you come to Paintsville? For right. <laughs> <laughs> from Washington, D.C., where it seems like things are happening all the time. Right. 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 <laughs> I, I think that question answers itself these days. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly, yes. Well, there you go. So here you are in Paintsville, and when you moved here, of course you moved with your husband, but what were you working on doing at that time, raising a family? or My or background else? was in the energy okay. um, sector. Got it. And later, um, the financial industry, banking. Okay, very good. Um, so most of my career has been in the coal industry, Excellent. however. Yeah, yes. great, yeah. great. And then... Of course, we've had several upswings and downturns in coal over the years, uh, but I'm assuming that this last downturn kind of hit hard and, and pushed you into something else? The last downturn was more structural okay. in nature than cyclical, right? Uh, which the industry has experienced historically. Right. So there was a, a need, a pressing need, to look at diversifying the economy here. Um, with the thousands of direct mining jobs lost, right. in addition to the supply chain jobs, yeah. um, you know, three times that number. So we have an incredibly skilled workforce, mm -hmm. and so we, we just had to look at alternatives for diversification. So, so this is kind of the heart of what we want to talk about, because my contention has been for years now that there are great ideas in Appalachia that solve the problems that exist in Appalachia. Yes. And so I, I want to talk to you about the genesis of this idea, because what you have at this facility, and, and we're at Kathy's facility today, uh, is fantastic. I've toured this place. I know what it's like back there. Thank you. Uh, so, so talk about the genesis of the idea, and then, and then how did you pull this off? My word. <laughs> well, I didn't pull it off by myself. Well, of course not. For starters, <laughs> I'm. A, I like to compare it. Um, I, I'm just the conductor of the band. Sure. Um, I lack the talent to play an instrument. Right. So um, the band. I have a tremendous team of people. Yeah. Um, starting with, of course, Gene Haas, sure. uh, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, but, but I approach this like I would any other business venture. You start with what you have mm -hmm. and what differentiates you from everybody else. Right. And so what was that in this case? Workforce. Right. The people, the indigenous people of Appalachia are incredibly skilled. Mm -hmm. And that skill set is born out of necessity right. rather than choice, which is the distinguishing factor. Yeah, yeah. So many, as we know, go on um, uh, to mine coal or work in affiliated industries, which further hones that innate skill set. Right. Uh, the mechanical competence mm -hmm. is is unparalleled. Um, that, that we possess here. It, it, it's just really amazing. Right. And we've tapped into that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, you know, we started with what we had rather than what we focused on what we didn't have, right. which is what you hear about in Appalachia. Right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, so what you had was this really skilled workforce 
who wasn't matched up with opportunity or missed right. a couple of skills? What, what was That's going right. on? That's right. So um, we were aware that there was a skills gap mm -hmm. in a number of really uh, good paying jobs out there. So talk about that skills gap for a minute because okay. I, I think politicians in particular throw that word around a lot and don't really tell us what it means. And I know you know what it means, yes. so what does it mean here? Yes, okay, to me, yeah. skills gap is uh, basically a mismatch mm -hmm. between the skills that we are teaching um, and the labor demands. Right, so the workforce needs this, we're teaching this, and they just don't overlap. Absolutely. Okay, good. So um, one of our students who you will meet, um, tells that story. Yeah. Um, he's degreed and he came through my program and he's off and running. Yeah. Um, so it's um, it, it's just combining uh, what we have, uh, adding a little training and education and uh, accessing those new careers in, in the workforce. Good. So a lot of people have had this idea but not very many have pulled it off. Uh, but you took it to the next step, you and your team Yes. We're able to do that. So walk us through that okay. process. So I um, thought about, okay, how would we uh, partner with private industry? Mm -hmm. um, I felt that a brand, uh, we needed that partnership to provide instantaneous credibility right. to what we were doing. That was the difficult part. Um, you ponder and you think, so who, who would that be? Mm -hmm. Well, um, Gene Haas is the largest machine tool builder in the Western Hemisphere. Right. He has humble beginnings from the, uh, he was born in the Youngstown, Ohio area. Um, he's an American entrepreneur, businessman, mm -hmm. and of course, a motorsports enthusiast. That's how I know the name. <laughs> yes, and that's how most people know his right. name. Um, so we got hooked up with him and discovered he had a foundation, the Gene Haas Foundation, which was um, founded to provide education to reskill America's workforce mm -hmm. for these careers in advanced manufacturing. Right, right. So we talked with him, and um, he has 12, about 12 other Haas centers in the United States most of them in large metropolitan areas. So I knew it was a challenge to convince him that he should put his name on one here in East Kentucky. Right. But with his background, he certainly understood the demographic of our workforce. And it was a resounding yes. And um, uh, his generosity allowed us to start the center and our overwhelming success has been attributed to our affiliation with the Haas brand and the network that they have brought to us. So you got in Mr. Haas and, and he came in and started contributing financially to yes. be able to do something really great. Yes. And even though I know they can't hear it on camera or on the microphones, I can hear what's happening in the back right now. So, so tell us a little bit about what had to take place to close the skills gap. We have to reskill our workforce, right. and um, it takes a, a talented workforce uh, to start with, which is exactly what we have. Mm -hmm. You couldn't write a better script about the type of student that you would want in a Haas Center. Right. So, so what do they learn when they come in? So we've got people who come in, they know how to operate heavy machinery, they know how to do basic programming, a lot yes. of them. Uh, they certainly know how to operate in a dangerous environment and, and maintain safety standards. But what they miss is some technical skills yes. around machining? Is machining. That? Okay. So we teach CNC machining. Okay, break that down for me because <laughs> CNC could be a whole lot of things. Okay. Uh, computer numerical control. Computer numerical control. Okay. Yes. I've wanted to ask you that question for two years. Thank that, you. That you're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. And it, it, when you say machining to most people today, even today, right. they think of the old manual machines. Right, tool and die. You use your, your lathe and yes. yeah, that's how it works. Manual mills, right. manual lays, drill presses. Mm -hmm. Well, today that's all automated. Right. 
we teach um, people how to set up, uh, operate, program uh, those machines. And it, it's pretty cool stuff. This is uh, 21st century advanced manufacturing. Right. And there's an uber cool factor to this. Yeah, that's the buzzword, I think, that, again, politicians and business people throw around is advanced manufacturing. And not everyone knows what that is. I, mean, I, I grew up in Flint, Michigan, not ah. too far from there. And we would go down into the Buick factory and watch them put cars together. Right. It was far from advanced manufacturing. Yes. You know, they had a, a dye and they poured liquid metal into it and then kicked it out and people moved it around and slapped it into a vehicle. Uh, but now, I mean, if you want to make literally anything, you anything. start with a hunk of metal, throw it in the machine. It's, it's more technical than that. Yes. <laughs> and then program the machine to cut it into whatever shape you that's want. That's right. And that's what you're teaching these, these men and right. women to do. That's right. That's just amazing. And it's intimidating uh, when they first walk in to the machine lab. They look at those machines, and it, it's a bit overwhelming. Sure. Uh, but Gene Hawes and his group developed the curriculum. Um, as I say, we eat the elephant one bite at a time. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, they're doing it. Yeah. And uh, we have um, an incredible success rate. Um, the jobs, the careers um, that uh, people from Appalachia are securing are just amazing. So talk about the students just a little bit because that will help us transition because we're going to get to talk to a student in a little while. Certainly. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the students, the numbers that you attract, right. uh, the number that you're able to serve because I know those are different numbers. Yes. Uh, and then what some of them are doing now. Right. Well, we have a, a long waiting list. Um, we are selective. The process is quite selective. Um, there are some basic fundamentals. Um, you have to be able to, and you have to have the willingness uh, to learn. Right. We teach not only hard skills, but soft skills as well. And sometimes those are as challenging as the hard skills. They are. You're right. Uh, we're strict. This is like a boot camp. And um, most people succeed. Right. We have some that just can't cut it. Right. But this right. is about Appalachia and putting our best foot forward in attempting to create a new image for us. Good. So how many, how many people have you had apply for the program? Do you have that number handy? Oh, goodness. I don't have that number handy. Ballpark it. It's okay. Many. Several hundred. Several hundred. Okay. Yes. And yes. how many do you put through in each cohort group? We have... Uh, 12 or the recommended number is 12 okay. per group right. because this is a lot of hands-on machining yeah so the safety um, issues um, have to be managed mm -hmm. uh, we, we currently have 14 in our youth class so we have two cohorts okay our youth class um, this is designed for young men and women uh, right out of high school mm -hmm. So uh, we have 14. That is a nine-month program. Okay. And we start with basic safety. Um, they are tra EMT training, um, you know, all, all of the prerequisites yeah. that you get when you're in the workforce. Right, and, and a lot of things that experienced minors would have already had. That's exactly yeah, right. right. That's exactly right. So they um, are here until next May. Okay. Um, we just graduated a class. Everyone has jobs, uh, That's good jobs, wonderful. Yep. Um, high paying jobs, and um, we're, we're proud of that. So we're on class number two with the youth class, okay. and then uh, we will graduate our fifth class in the adult program, and um, we typically have 12 uh, to 14 in that class, okay. and uh, they will graduate on Thursday. Are they a nine-month class too, or is the I'm adult sorry, class shorter? I'm sorry, that is four months, so I thought sixteen that was quicker. weeks. Yeah. Yes, so they've got a lot of skills already. They right? do. Yeah, right. They do. They sixteen do. weeks. Yes, and you get them certified in CNC, and they're able to go out and find just amazing places to work. I'm oh, sure. absolutely. So we, um, the students here earn yes their national credentials. So um, from the National Institute of Metalworking Skills. So those are NIMS credentials. Right. They have to earn those. We have nothing to do with that. It's mm -hmm. a computer program. And then they make a part, and we send it off to the engineering firm to give them a green light, hopefully. Yep. And um, 
they learn, um, well, the soft skills, again, it, it, it's a balance. Right. Um, the soft skills are equally as important as the hard technical skills. True. Um, I give the example, you can be the best machinist on the globe, but if you have a difficult time communicating with a fellow or lady sitting next to you, right. you know. Right. So. I, I was at uh, Toyota about a year ago, and we were talking to, they, they have a new program at Toyota where they bring in machinists, and they bring in engineers, and they work side by side. Yes. And those soft skills, the ability to communicate between the machinists and the engineers were so critical yes. to helping them get the parts done on time oh, and yes. then replicated out in the factory and on the floor. So yeah, I'm absolutely with you. Soft skills are, are just crucial. Oh, yes. And, and the feedback from the employers is that our um, graduates are helping train others in their shops. Oh, yeah. So yeah. the value is just incredible. But, you know, if you're from Appalachia, that's what you do. You that's help right. your neighbor. That's right. So those are some of the attitudinal skills that are here that often we don't find in right. bigger cities. Right. You know, this, this has been my contention for a long time. The big cities should stop trying to attract new companies to come work there and send some of them to rural parts of America. Not only will it save rural America, but it will give us the chance to showcase all the great skills that we have in regions like this. Absolutely. Yeah, and so we do. I must tell you, we have several um, established, some global companies visiting Paintsville. That's great, isn't it? Um, they yeah. have a taste of our workforce, and now they're coming here to look around about, uh, you know, possible expansion opportunities. So, and this, this brings me right to what I had hoped we would get to. This is a replicable idea. It can grow, it can expand, and it's really only limited by the number of companies who are interested in coming here. Exactly. Because we can train as much workforce as they need. That's right. You know, you, you can go to Louisville and cry with every other major company about the fact that you're, you don't have enough workforce. Right. Or you can come to Paintsville, Prestonsburg, Pikeville. Exactly. And find workforce in abundance, and we'll make sure they're trained for you. Absolutely. Yeah, this is great. This is one of those great ideas that needs to get out. You're listening to Appalachia Rising. Thank you so much for being with us. In just a minute, we'll be back with a couple of guests who've gone through this program. You're listening to Appalachia Rising, presented by the University of Pikeville. Welcome back to Appalachia Rising, the podcast where we talk about the stories of Appalachia from people who live here and work here. We've got a second guest today. Uh, after talking to Kathy, I can, I can sense that you're probably excited about what she's doing here because she's training up a workforce who can do great things. Well, now we need to find out what some of those great things are. And in, I've got two guests, one back to back, that will talk a little bit about that. First is Scott McElmurray. Scott, tell us a little bit about your business and what your business does. And then I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit about Kathy and how you connected. Sure, sure. So my name's Scott McElmurray. I'm the Vice President General Manager for Heartland Automation, which okay. is a premier integrator of the AutoGuide mobile robots. And uh, we do a lot of work uh, for uh, automotive manufacturing, Toyota, Mercedes, Chrysler, uh, a lot of the big name uh, automotive plants. And our business model is we basically make an autonomous vehicle that um, substitutes for manned uh, tuggers, okay. manned forklifts, manned pallet stackers, et cetera. So we replace that function with a, what we call a mobile robot. So this is moving stuff all around it's moving the Moving stuff floor. around, maybe it's parts, uh, could be uh, um, uh, pick systems where it's just bringing bins around to go to a kitting area. Right. Um, what you would normally see a, uh, when you go into these large warehouses, you'll see forklift drivers that are moving these things around. Sure. And I think it's key to note that we're not trying to take away jobs but we're trying to fulfill jobs that can't be filled by the employ the employers. Right. So that's right. a big piece of what we do. Um, so, um, you know, when we when we found kind of going into your next question of Kathy. Right. So uh, I wasn't looking for Kathy when I found Kathy. Sure. Um, but what a find it was because we uh, we went through a recruiter to look for some folks that could could learn this mobile uh, robot installation, and. Um, so had, pause for just a second. Sorry. What goes into installation? Okay. So is this uh, so installation is you got the mobile robot. You got to take it to the factory. Okay. You got to program it. Right. Basically, you got to set up its path. 
So that sets up a line in the floor or something that it it's, follows. It's, it's all it's all virtual. Nothing. Oh, okay. There's nothing physically on the floor. Gotcha. So this is uh, this is using a uh, laser okay. that's on the top of the vehicle. It's called light, lidar technology, and basically how it works works is, you know, and as an example, we're not on we're not doing this right now. Oh yeah, it's it's live. Oh, Keep great, talking. You're great. good. Um, it's basically mapping. Uh, the facility that you're in, it's looking for natural features. So if okay. we're in this building, it's going to look for walls. It's going to know where those walls are, and then it's going to look at where can I drive because I know that there's a back wall, there's a open door, there's a hallway, whatever it is, as, a, as an example. So this is this is a basic AI, really. I mean, it's, it's not quite AI, but, okay. but it's it's close. All right, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you were looking for people to take that into a new environment, mm -hmm. program the environment so right. that the, the device knew what it was doing. Right and then turn it loose. That's correct. Okay, that's good. correct. So back to Kathy. Okay, so back to Kathy. So um, I, I got three candidates, um, and I believe Josh was one of those candidates that came on this first run. And um, I was super impressed with um, the knowledge, the, kind of the background knowledge that they had, and that's when I started learning about who they were and where they came from, right. which was in this area. And um, one thing that I was really impressed upon was the preset skills that are already ingrained in these in these folks. Right. Um, so you're not getting a just a body to train. You're getting a knowledge uh, person that actually uh, uh, is capable of doing a lot, a little bit higher level. And so that I, that was my surprise. And that's when I went from, okay, I'm not talking to this recruiter anymore. I want to go see the person behind it. And that's where I met Kathy, and had my first visit here and saw what she's doing here at Ecami. And and although yes, she's here teaching uh, machining, mm -hmm. uh, which I can use as well right. uh, in my operation, but just the, 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 for, the workforce that she's gathering, these, uh, these either, they're either young or they're either, there's two classes obviously, they're either the young class coming out uh, or they're the, 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 the displaced, the coal mine, coal miners uh, from this area. And, and what, I, what I have found is they have a lot of skills that they don't value. Right. Uh, you know these guys. These are electricians. They're fabricators. They're, you know, they've been doing this work for years and don't really understand what they have. And it, and I am completely a skilled labor work work for workhouse. So I can't find skilled labor in my area. So right. there's a plethora of of skilled workforce in this area. Yeah, so, absolutely. So then what she does is I think she she kind of. Uh, sends them down that funnel and she get, she produces the best of the best here. Mm -hmm. So um, so it was easy for me after I started this relationship and we've done we've we have done nothing but hire from Ecami since we found this this group. So we've hired 20, 20 plus employees now. That's fantastic. Um, and you know Josh which you're going to talk to next December, he couldn't he didn't know what a mobile robot was. He's on his own right now um, installing these things. Yeah. So um, says a lot about, and I don't think it's that easy to install, it just says a lot about the skill set that, that we're getting. I think the biggest thing that, that people miss from Appalachia is they, they miss the basic critical thinking skills that people in this region grow up with mm -hmm. because they don't have everything conveniently provided to them like folks do who live in cities. Right. I think when you grow up here, there are some situations you just have to solve on your own. Mm -hmm. And so that's what you're tapping into right. is this wonderful innate intelligence that I think all humans used to have, but we've gotten kind of lazy. That's right. And, and in Appalachia, it's still in abundance. Mm -hmm. And so you take those bright people who have problem-solving skills, teach them soft skills, and teach them the technical skills that they need, and that's what Kathy's done right. so well. And they provide a workforce for you mm -hmm. that's really unparalleled. Right. Yeah. So just getting that story out is really what this is about. And one thing I want to mention about uh, about what Kathy does here that that, in, that it's been impressed upon her on her students and as an employer I look for is that she teaches them the discipline, the basic discipline, the social the social skills, being on time to work, mm -hmm. you know the five S, all those things that that you, they're hard to find, yeah, and yeah. they don't get through this program unless they understand that, and that that's that's a key that's a key item that's missed a lot. Yeah, it really is. So so we're about out of time for your segment because mm -hmm. I want to get to Josh. But I want to give you a chance to say to other employers who are out there looking for workforce, and maybe they're in one of these workforce mm -hmm. deserts where they can't find the skilled sure. people, what would you tell them about Kathy's students coming out of eCami? Well, I would tell them, first of all, don't take more than I need. 
<laughs> no, no, well, we'll I just have to get her to scale up. So right. no, that's uh, in all seriousness, I, I, it's it's a great untapped resource. Yeah. I think uh, one thing I I believe is the first company that locates the Appalachia. I mean, look what a workforce they have to pull from. That's right. So uh, we continue to to work at how we can use uh, the students from here, whether it be in the mobile robot side or whether it be on the machining side, fab side, et cetera. So, you know, she's continuing to look at what kind of skills should I be developing. Mm -hmm. She's staying ahead of the curve. So she's looking at the technologies people need, not just teaching some um, old art form that people continue to, you know, that, that, that dies. She's looking at what's next. Yes. So that's what's going to make this uh, a great opportunity for anyone to, to connect with. Thanks, Scott. You got Next, it. we got Josh coming on camera, and he's going to talk to us a little bit about what it's like to be a student. So sit with us. You're listening to Appalachia Rising, presented by the University of Pikeville. All right, welcome back to Appalachia Rising, the podcast where we talk to folks who live in Appalachia about the great things happening here. And I've got a real treat for you guys right now because we've got Josh with us. Josh is a student who came through Kathy's program at eCami and now works for Scott. So, Josh, welcome to the program. It's good to see you. Good to see you, too. Yeah. So, tell us a little bit about where you were born, where you grew up. So, I have grew up all my life around Plainsville. Have you? Okay. Yep. We got regional names around here, so, so where'd you grow up, really? Johnson County. Johnson County. Yep. Okay. That's good. Very good. And did you go to the, the high school here in town? Yep. Johnson Central. Johnson Central. When did you graduate? 2013. So, yeah, that's a little while ago, it's right? It's been a while. Yeah, yeah 2013. So... Uh, Married, kids, anything like that going nothing, on? Nothing right now. So just living the life at living this point. Life, yeah, okay. that's not so bad. Good. So so tell me a little bit about life after high school. Where did you work? What did you do? So after I graduated high school, I went to Moorhead State University. Okay. And got my bachelor degree in civil engineering and construction management. Excellent. And yeah. after that, I, I still wanted to come back home, but there wasn't really anything available. Right. So just kind of worked, you know, odd jobs there for, for a couple months, and mm -hmm. then I would found out about this. And so right after that, I would actually came here just seeing if they had any internships, anything like that. And so then I ended up getting talked into coming to this school. Right. Best decision of my life. Excellent. And with that, then they was able to hook me up with all kinds of job opportunities from there. And that's how I went to working for Scott. That's great. So you graduated from Moorhead State in 2017? Yep. So 2017, and then just kind of in the workforce, bouncing between jobs for yep. a while. Yeah. Still in the Paintsville area? Yep. Yeah. You, you've got family here still? Yeah, Mom all my and dad. family's pretty much from around Everybody's here. Everybody's around here. That's one of the things about Appalachia that I love is, is that family is so important, and, and people just want to come together. Uh, you see your family a lot still? Yeah, I still come in on the weekends. Do you? So. Good. So, uh, so you went to work for... Well, first of all, let's go to eCami. So tell me about the program a little bit. Nine months, four months, what program were it you in? The, it was the adult class. It was 16 weeks. Okay. And throughout the whole thing, they teach you not just advanced manufacturing and CNC, but they teach you just, like Scott had said, just the soft skills that you're going to need that any job's going to be looking for. Because somebody could be, you know, know everything, but, I mean, if they aren't a good person or a good worker, have a good work ethic, then, right. you know, they're not going to be worth much. So, but it sounds like a, a lot of your life kind of led to that, right? Because I'm guessing you grew up in a good home where you were taught good morals. Yeah. So that's pretty common here in Appalachia. Yeah. So your parents, good people? Yeah. yeah. We're on camera. You better say yeah. <laughs> Very good people. <laughs> good. I'm, they'll be glad to hear you say that. <laughs> and, uh, and then good schooling and, and Moorhead State was a good experience for you. Yeah. Yeah. And because it's good college. Uh, you know, yeah. I, I know folks up there too. And, uh, and then coming here and learning those specific skills that really opened the door for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so tell us a little bit about working for Scott. Is it a good place to be? It's a very good place to be. So as, what, do you, what as, do you do? I'm one of the install guys. So I'm kind of, you know, half in, half out, and just kind of going around uh, to all the different sites to do the installation process. So, you know, they make it. And then from there, you know, it needs integrated into the field. So that's, that's where I come in. So tell me what, uh, first of all, where have you been? Because I know you get to travel around and install these things. So any place interesting? Uh, I've been down in a place called Beach Island. 
South Carolina for a while. That sounds like a terrible place to be, doesn't it? it, it you know, it sounds like a paradise, but it's not a beach <laughs> or an island. So. <laughs> it's not a beach <laughs> or an island. Well, that's South Carolina for you. me. Yeah. But still, you got to go down there and, and set up this, this robotic system. Yep. Good. So, so what would a typical you know, day be like in your life right now if, when you're setting up a system? And don't give away anything proprietary. I'm not looking for that. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's kind of a, a process, so it all kind of depends. You know, you start out, first thing you got to do is map out the area, like he said, with the LiDAR system. Okay. So, you know, that's the first thing is set up the, the map, like the, what it's going to be seeing. Mm -hmm. And then from there, then you go through, make its routes. And it's real similar to the CNC. You know, you make the route for, you know. For whatever's being cut, exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so it's kind of similar in that way. Except instead of looking at it, you know, looking straight at it like that, then, you know, it's kind of an overhead map layout like that. In a way, you're, you're kind of machining, but you're doing it inside a factory, right? Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. So drawing the paths yeah. that, that a machine would cut, you're just drawing them so the robot can move through them in 3D space. Yeah. That's, that's the similarity of it. And, you know, that's something that I think Kathy would talk to us about as a transferable skill. You're learning something in a machining system that you can actually use in a variety of other settings, and it provides you with an opportunity for employment, right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah good. That's right. So, so that sets you up for this job, but it sets you up actually for a lifetime of employment, whether it's this company or other companies in the future. Exactly. It definitely, I've learned a lot. Uh, just going here, working for that. Good. I've learned all kinds of stuff. Excellent. So, so what's what's the long-term plan for Josh? I mean. I mean, you're, you're clearly new in the workforce. You've only been working a couple years for Scott. So what's the long-term plan? What do you hope to do someday? It's, it's hard to say. I, I like it where I'm at right now. So. Okay. So living one day at a time in the moment. Living, living in the moment. All right. Very good. Well, we hope that you stay employed and that you, you keep doing great things. I know that Kathy's proud of you, and we're, we're proud of you too. So keep moving. All right? All right. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for being with us today. This is Appalachia Rising, talking about the great ideas that happen in Appalachia. If you need to learn more about eCami or any of the things that are happening here, uh, you'll find links on our website and you can get to those. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us on this edition of Appalachia Rising. For more information on this episode or others, visit www.upike.edu forward slash Appalachia Rising.